Hey guys, Jordan with TYT and TYT Politics here with our uh, producer, editor, uh, reporter extraordinaire, Emma Viglin. Now, we just had quite a breakfast. I would say uh, money, for, money for breakfast, if you want to call it. We uh, got our way into a gala brunch for Debbie Wasserman Schultz. It was the establishment of the establishment there. Um, I am very, very friendly to my senior citizens. I love my grandmother. I love uh, s slightly older viewers of the Young Turks, so it's in no way uh, to be disrespectful. But if we're keeping it real, it was uh, kind of the average age of 102 in there. Uh, I took a, <laughs> took a lot of photos. Uh, we had to be discreet because uh, we were probably the youngest people there by, I'd say, 30 or 40 years. What do you think? Yeah, we should have worn some, like, movie makeup or grandma wigs or something. Like, I brought a cane. It was ridiculous. We obviously stuck out from, from the get-go, and I was like, oh, God, we're made. But um, <laughs> they ended up just figuring us out in a more less discreet way because of our tweets. Um, I mean, I guess we should just jump right into it. Yeah, so. So basically, just to set the scene, West Broward County in Florida, it was their Democratic meeting. Uh, it was a brunch for W. Wasserman. A brunch Schultz. gala, Jordan. A, a brunch gala. Gala. And it cost uh, $45 a pop to get in, uh, so it was 90 bucks for both of us. So we just went in. We didn't go in with our camera or anything like that. Didn't want to cause red flags. But we were sitting at a table by ourselves, and because I like to rabble rouse, I was tweeting. Uh, you could see some of my tweets that were uh, kind of setting the scene for the demographic of this event. Um, and I guess they, her, Debbie Wasserman Schultz's staffers, uh, were following my Twitter uh, and then your Twitter yeah. since one of the tweets had you in it. So uh, pretty soon I was taking photos and thinking, oh, this is great. You know, we're, we're having a ball. Um, I had been tipped off that there would be possible protests inside. There were some other uh, young folk inside dressed in suits and trying to fit in seamlessly. But um, basically, as, as the event ensued, uh, we were closed in uh, even further by Debbie Wasserman Sch Schultz's uh, goons, I would call them. Yeah, I, no, I'd, I'd also say that it started really when, you know, you were like, go up to her, because she, her first table was going back to get the, her brunch, her lovely brunch, and get a mimosa and all that stuff, and she was walking. A non-alcoholic mimosa. It was non-alcoholic. Yeah. Uh, then mm -hmm. I'm glad I didn't get one. Um, but, I, yeah, so she was walking back and towards us, and you were like, get a picture, get a picture. So I did. I went up to her, and then it, her press guy just like beeline he had this big i heart debbie sign on him uh they well, were all... i told you to get a picture because oh, right. she's going to recognize my face right. if you recall a few months ago uh you know i had a little exchange with her at the democratic debate in brooklyn new york and the people behind bernie feel like a lot of the uh, establishment democrats are taking money from the same people that they say they're going after wall street uh, big oil. look i mean i think both political parties through time immemorial have had a a spectra, a range of views across a spectrum, but we're a big tent party. So we, we have the ability to absorb and be unified with people on the far left and, you know, set that are center right. So I had Emma, who is a lot prettier and she doesn't know yet, uh, go up to her and tell, say what happened. So basically, I tried to go up to her. Jordan was like, say, I want to be just like you and see what she says, because that would have been like... A plus, it would have been hilarious. But her press guy just intervened, goes, are you Emma? I, like, I've seen your tweets. It's not really funny to make fun of the people that have invited you here, saying that these people are old, that they're knocking on death's door. I'm like, dude, I didn't say they're knocking on death's door. And I go, I paid to get in here. He goes, does that give you the right to, to, to disparage the people that are here? Mm -hmm. And I said, I kind of want to be like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, it does. Because this is an event that's supposed, that's First Amendment, that's free speech. Uh, that's what I'm supposed to be allowed to do. Um, so I wasn't really able to ask her any questions when I went up to her. I was really bummed out because that was like my big, my big moment. But I just was able to get a kind of colder selfie with her. I didn't give her any adoration. Uh, but it would have been funny to get that story. But I, I was able to at least get to her. I asked the guy, I said, are you gonna, is, are you gonna prevent me from taking a picture with, with the Congresswoman? And he said, no, no, not really. And I was like, okay, well, that, that was what you were insinuating when you grabbed me by my shoulder as I tried to approach her. Uh, because, pulling a Corey Lewandowski. Oh though. yeah, I know, he just should stuck me with a pen. Um, <laughs> but but uh, yeah, I mean, I, obviously, like there was 
hostility right off the bat because of the tweets we sent. And I don't even think we tagged Debbie Wasserman Schultz. So they must have some alert. Uh, they want to an alert to shut down any disparaging speech I'm, of her. I'm kind of proud, actually, because I didn't think I was big enough yet for any congressperson or even presidential candidate to know our channel, know yeah. who I was. And, and I didn't I didn't tag her specifically, but I guess they were on the lookout uh, and must have seen my tweeting. I tweeted out some photos of uh, some of her uh, more elderly supporters, which were the whole room, and um, you know some of my own kind of play-by-play -play of what was going on. But what I thought was interesting is it, it is really uh, reminiscent of the DNC, what he said to you. Uh, when I was in the DNC, you have all these older people basically shouting at Bernie Sanders protesters, show some respect, and like, how dare you show dissent? Because um, they're not used to, uh, young people or journalists actually going into a you know their little circle jerk uh brunch and actually dissenting and not being you know friendly or being donors i thought another thing that was interesting uh was in the beginning it was like a shout out to the who's who of uh, broward county uh you know is is nan is nan in the house and then they of course we should mention congressman congressman john lewis was there um, who obviously, uh, you know, is very well known for his uh, heroic activities during the civil rights movement. So Debbie Wasserman Schultz brought him down to do photo ops and speak at fundraisers for her uh, and walk over a bridge. Walk over a bridge, which I was there at, and, well, and the stories for that later. Yes, yeah, we'll yeah. get to that story. But, um, Spoiler. So let me uh, fast forward. So after Emma was pretty much intimidated, I would say, by one of her goons, that's when they started closing in on us. Uh, I started seeing, uh, you know, two, or two young guys kind of in suits following my every movement and then kind of standing to the side of our table. And it was very clear to me that we had been made, shall we say. Um, and kind of what I felt like was, I mean, I, I wasn't really like afraid or anything, but it was almost like a coordinated thing. Like I saw him whispering to a woman who I think was, we, oh. we bought the ticket from, he was whispering to that woman. Then uh, another woman who I think was like the head of the Broward County Democrats came up and started talking to you at the table. Yeah, and, and Jordan wasn't really giving her much, but she was asking me questions. I was like trying not to look at her and she wanted to know who we were essentially. And, and I also think that it's, it's an intimidation tactic. When you go up to someone and you, you introduce yourself, you basically try to just be like, I'm being friendly to you despite like me thinly veiling my disdain for you so you better shut up you better not cause any trouble and they thought I think that we were the ones that were going to be causing the protest but we were there because we had gotten a tip that there might have been some protests we'll get to that later those protests didn't end up happening um, but another thing that that her, his young I would say or her young I would say press secretary or something um, the young guy sat at our table and like grabbed a water and like mm -hmm. chugged it right. and like and was like f like just like laughing to himself like you're some fucking like good fellas character like you're trying to basically uh, say, show show your put your balls and put them on the table and mm -hmm. say yeah I can do whatever I want to you mm -hmm. no freedom of the press and uh, he actually followed me out when I went to the bathroom he followed me out you should have asked him to come into the <laughs> stall with you yeah <laughs> uh, so basically it got to the point where uh, I had to say to Emma and myself like put your phone down because I think they were trying to look over us as to what we were texting what we were tweeting and then uh, as Debbie Wasserman Schultz actually went up on stage uh, to accept, you know, they were handing out awards for all these terrific Congress people and local officials. She was accepting an award. Uh, that's when they kind of were like within an inch of us, standing behind us. It was multiple people. Uh, one of her, I think, senior aides in a gray suit. Uh, the two young guys who had been kind of circling around us uh, for, at that point, 20 minutes. And they were standing right behind us. Uh, pretty much, I, my feeling was to, if we were gonna take video or try to do anything, kind of yank us back or yank my phone. Um, that's when I kind of, my gut instinct was, no disrespect to you, they uh, know me and are concerned more about me because they have seen me before up in New York and uh, that video kind of went a little viral. So I walked out because I thought less attention would be put on us if I wasn't there. So I walked out and uh, let Emma kind of, you know, have the phone ready in case there were protests and also try to get more uh, shots of Debbie Wasserman Schultz. 
say, uh, I didn't see the speech, so tell me about it. Yeah, so I mean, there's not really much to note about the speech, uh, and, except for the fact that it was filled with nothing of substance, nothing about her policy, nothing about really anything. She talked about how her district is the best place to raise kids and how every memorable thing that has ever happened to her has happened to her in her district. She had cancer in her district. She, I mean, I got, I hate to say that disparagingly, like, you know, my mom had cancer. I know, I know how hard it is, but she uses it so blatantly as a political tactic. And then she talked about how she raised her three kids, how she plays with them in a beautiful Miami <laughs> County field or whatever. Um, you know, she, it, there was nothing of substance. And, and then at the end, the kicker, right at the end, she started to cry or fake cry. I'm coming home to all of you. Um, and I was just, come on, like, it was so perfectly timed, and you just know that her advisors, or she, this has worked for her in the past, where you get choked up the last few lines of your speech, like, thank you all so much for coming, it means so much, like, oh my god, you know, pick another time to cry, spice it up a little bit, you know what I mean? It was just so blatantly obvious, and, and then, you know, we knew that maybe the, some of the people that had tipped us off were going to protest. We saw cops trickling, or I saw cops trickling in, I did try to get some pictures of those guys uh, being shadowed by those cops, but there was a lot of uh, coordination between her campaign and the cops because there were also rumblings of protests that were going to be occurring outside as well. So just a lot of tension in the room, and I think a lot of the old people were too asleep to, to notice it. I noticed a couple people actually asleep. But uh, also, like the, the main takeaway from this was not for me and Emma like to go in and poke fun at old people. That's not the point, uh, you know, there's plenty of wise and uh, active uh, senior citizens all over the country, so that's not what I'm trying to do here, but I think the takeaway I had was this is the real uh, kind of ignorance and dis disconnection that a lot of the uh, older crowd that votes for establishment politicians have, because it's speech after speech, uh, whether it was Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, other local officials that kind of spoke, they were handing out awards to a bunch of people, they kept talking about our children's future, and you know, uh, we're proud of everything. What about our children's children's future? Children's <laughs> children's, children's you know, children's children. They kept talking about <laughs> our children's future, and all the great things Debbie Wasserman Schultz has done for equality, and these things, and all the, you know, all how Democrats in Broward County and beyond, they, the huge applause when Hillary Clinton's name was mentioned, are fighting for, you know, the middle class and all these things, and you look at the, sir, all the tables were filled with senior citizens and they're clapping and you could tell they're really buying into this. Whereas the reality is politicians like Debbie Wasserman Schultz, their top donors don't give a fuck about the middle class and actively work against the middle class. Their, um, the policies Debbie Wasserman Schultz has pushed Hillary Clinton, obviously, have not helped middle, middle class people, have not helped low income people. There was an African American uh, woman who was on stage handing out, I think introducing W. Wasserman Schultz, if I'm uh, incorrect. What is what has W. Wasserman Schultz done for African Americans? Well, then why was John Lewis there? I mean, right. right like, I would if, if I could ask John Lewis a question, and we talked about this, it would have been what has what is Debbie Wasserman Schultz's plan to help African Americans or, or and Black rights? The, what if you have fought your whole life for, and I respect you for that. Um, and also, just a funny side note, we in in the. Uh, pamphlet, they listed all of Debbie Wasserman Schultz's accomplishments. They described her as a progressive, which is a title, a moniker that you know that she had uh, said that she didn't want to be labeled as. She wanted to be a liberal, which I don't really know what the fuck that means, but it means you're distancing yourself from the youth movement that is deeming themselves progressive. And she has a lot of uh, great policy in terms of pool safety. Pool safety, in case anyone uh, wants to know, wants to look that up. Uh, senior citizens, lots of floaties for them. Yeah, but I think what what, uh, what going there and this video hopefully accomplishes is there's a real, um, and I don't think it's malicious, I don't think older people who are not, not doing as poorly as young people with buried in debt uh, want to screw over you know, their grandkids. I don't think that. I think there is a um, loyalty and allegiance that if you're in a community like you know this community in South Florida, a lot of senior citizens, uh, it is a very heavy uh, Jewish community, so l'chaim to my brothers and sisters, I'm Jewish. Um, you kind of like, you don't really focus on the policies as much as the loyalty to the person. And oh, Debbie, you know, that's, that's the vibe I got when yeah. she was going around, you know, uh, 
hugging and taking selfies with her constituents, you could tell that they feel they know her because she's done the ice cream socials with them over the years where they go and have ice cream with their congresswoman. Uh, it, I, I think what I've seen on the campaign trail, particularly Trump supporters, uh, even Hillary Clinton supporters, older people actually know the policies less than younger people, and that's why younger people are so pissed off. That's why Bernie Sanders, right. uh, you know, developed such a huge youth movement because we're actually reading the policies. We know their records. We can see through the talk. Whereas these these senior citizens that make up so much so much of her voting block, they kind of just stick with what they know. They listen to the platitudes about the middle class, and she's fighting for us, and yada yada yada. And they don't realize, they don't, they just don't realize that they're doing the exact opposite. They're in Washington, essentially. Debbie Wasserman Schultz, the main thing she has done over the past few years is fundraise for the Democratic Party. That's why they're trying to come to her rescue now. She's been, I'll give it to her, she's been a, a behemoth fundraiser. And she's also gone on MSNBC and CNN a lot. But, but she hasn't had any results. Again, we have lost, a, or Democrats, progressives, if, if you want to lump them in together, have lost a ton of seats. I mean, she's not done her job. She's just fundraised. And I guess that's what they value. But I, but I guess what I would add is just... We, we should also add she has sorry. one of the lowest voting records right. for any anyone in the Florida delegation. You know, Marco Rubio obviously was hit really hard for... Um, his voting record while he was running for president, she has she has one of the poorest voting records in all of all f elected Floridians. So sh she's not doing any. She did a lot for the Democratic Party. She also helped kind of rig the election. But for people in Florida's 23rd district, I don't know what she's done. Well, and also I think why maybe older people have loyalty to her. You know, uh, Fred Fred Frost. Or you get check out our our video with him. It's up now. Um, he pointed out that he used to consider her a friend and used to consider her someone who was going to actually fight for the labor movement and, and, and the things that he cared about, but she sold her soul. She's become so steeped in Washington. So maybe these older voters still have that association with her from years ago where they think that actually Debbie is fighting for me, but it's not the case anymore. She has sold out her sold her soul completely. And also, I mean, when you touch on how older voters are less informed than younger people, there's a condescension often that people say when you say you get your in your news from the internet and they say you're not as informed you can pick and pick and choose the sites that you want to see that's not the case yes sometimes people can do that but you have a wealth of information available to you and if you have a smidgen of information then you know that Debbie Wasserman Schultz is an ineffective corporate shill and and that's the reality of it that's why we were the youngest people there by a country mile right and I, I also think that at the end of the day you know, Debbie Wasserman Schultz, uh, running against Tim Canova, has done everything in her power to lie low. She's doing friendly, you know, friendly events, brunch, gala, brunch galas in her honor. She walked, you know, two minutes down the road, hand in hand with John Lewis, which, by the way, being real, God bless you, John Lewis, but she, she's trying to shield herself with a American hero and an icon of the civil rights movement, because even me, if I were to go up and get in their face, I'd be blasted. Oh, you know, John Lewis, I'd do it anyway. But the point is, she is trying to hang low. She's trying to hang out around, you know, older, uh, older people who are friendly to her, who have donated to her. She's not, I mean, that debate that she did with Tim Canova was an absolute joke. It, she was a talking point machine, which I pointed out in previous videos, and the moderator really didn't challenge her that much. Uh, so I think she's basically trying to run out the clock here. And what I've seen also, uh, one story I want to tell, uh, it was with a woman, I won't say who because it was an off the record conversation, uh, but it was with a woman who's very wired into Florida politics. She, she is well known. And she basically told me, like Debbie Wasserman Schultz, it's unbelievable to her and saddening because when Deb Debbie came into Congress, and I'm not singling out Debbie Wasserman Schultz, she, she's just a symbol for a lot of politicians. When Debbie Wasserman Schultz came into uh, po Congress, she was a real fighter, and she was actually fighting for liberal causes. And she's, this woman I spoke to, you were there, uh, is just saddened by what she's become, because you know Debbie used to fight for actual progressive causes. She used to do more than just try to get in the spotlight on TV. Um, she, you know, she gave us a lot of inside baseball about how she ruled with an iron fist down in Florida politics, told us a story about how uh, you know somebody wanted to there was a consensus for who was going to be the Florida chairperson uh, of the Democratic Party of Florida. And Debbie came in and was like, it's, you know, recommended a, another name, her friend from college. Right. And, you know, basically said, what, you know, basically gave off the impression, you don't cross me. 
Yeah. What I want, ha what I want goes. But I, I mention this again, not because I think Debbie Wasserman Schultz is Lucifer, but she's a symbol for many politicians who came into Congress. She's pretty bad, though. No, she's bad. <laughs> but who come into Congress, you know, talking the talk, populist message, and then the minute they see the money dangling in front of them and see, you know, how it's pretty much it's very easy to stay in power if you just make the right friends and kiss kiss enough rings. Uh, they kind of become corrupted. Jenk has talked about this for years. That's why he started Wolfpack. And I think this breakfast kind of showed, put a face on that because again, these senior citizens who support her, they're not malicious people. I'm sure they've done good things in their life, but they're just very disconnected from the reality of the politician on stage, you know, throwing out platitudes to them. The fact that that politician is voting on things and pushing things that hurt their grandkids. And I think that's the disconnect. You could have all the nice non-alcoholic mimosas in the world. You could have John Lewis come down. You could have all friends and take selfies with your congresswoman, but they don't realize she is actually a detriment to their kid and their grandkids' future. So the question then becomes, is it, is it that they don't care or they just don't know? I'm gonna give them credit, a lot of these older people, because I've met a lot of them on the campaign trail. Uh, they don't, I don't think they really truly get it. It's not to say Jordan's always right about every policy or Emma's always right. Uh, there's room to kind of meet in the middle uh, and understand their take. But at the end of the day, W. Wasserman Schultz, like Hillary Clinton, there are black and white facts. Her, her top five donors are banks, uh, private equity, just like Hillary Clinton. Uh, she, has, she tried to basically block the Consumer Financial Bureau that Elizabeth Warren is famous for starting. She was basically voting with Republicans on trying to uh, prevent them from tighter regulations. And she was the only one in the Florida, de Florida delegation to fast vote to fast track the TPP. Right, which is, why, which is initially what prompted Tim Canova to run against her, Debbie Wasserman Schultz trying to uh, get legislation passed that essentially they could go over Congress and just ram the TPP through. So we could go on for days, but the the image that I will take away from this breakfast is this is what power looks like it's 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 in the shade it's tries to it, you know it, it does not welcome uh, dissent um, it's a lot of uh, you know shout outs on stage to this elected official and oh you're great and oh how's your new baby and this and that and there's no substance uh, and that's on the Republican and Democrat side so uh, now that you're for lack of a better word um, I won't say anything crude, but this is your first experience with seeing people kind of shadow you, uh, seeing politicians stick their advisors on you so that you essentially are, I mean, you were, we were pretty much uh, like a bunch of sardines. They were packed around us. What, what's your take? You know, I, I, I'm new to this, obviously. I'm learning as I go. Um, and, and Jordan and I will have discussions off camera about just different policy issues and sometimes Jordan's just more angry than I am obviously just from experience and from and from understanding uh, things from his perspective from being on the road and and it's stuff like this that really just gets you gets your blood boiling I mean we were not doing anything disruptive we were tweeting things that maybe no one agreed with but no one at that brunch was reading Twitter or knows what Twitter is to be to be quite honest with you um, I don't want, again I don't want to disparage and older, by the way to the Twitter haters I don't need permission to take a picture right. of an old person sorry it's a, this is America like I am very careful if I'm getting pictures of young like kids on the road I've done it all throughout the campaign asking their parents is this okay but the bottom line is these are old people this I, we paid to go into there I'm not trying to exploit them but to report what the event was, you got to show that it was predominantly senior citizens. That's just it. But the idea that you are exempt from protecting the First Amendment or that First Amendment stuff doesn't apply to you just because we got into a paid event, that's not the case. We paid to go th to go into that event so we can cover it however we want. We weren't punching people in the face. We weren't disrupting them. We were tweeting things about how people were old. And then a guy comes up to me as I try to talk to Debbie Wasserman Schultz and basically says, don't fucking try anything. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, that's how this stuff works. It's not how what democracy looks like. Democracy looks like the, the Bernie rallies, the grassroots stuff. What we're seeing with the Tim Canova side, you know, obviously we're, we're progressive, but when you have these closed socials and you're not allowed to have a dissenting opinion and you're not allowed to even cover it and tweet about it, then how is that democracy? How is that the First Amendment? That's called censorship. And that's what politicians, not consciously, but subconsciously, that's politicians who know that they don't have a great record to stand on, try to do. They try to shut out the bad optics because they don't want it going viral 
what kind of what kind of audience and what kind of supporters they have. So make this go viral. Yeah, let's make this go viral. Share uh, with your friends. Share with your friends. This is behind the scenes. Money for breakfast, power for breakfast, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and it tastes like shit. It tastes like shit. Stay tuned for more from Emma and I on the road. Thanks.